It is stroke analysis time, serving this time. So we're going to take a look at a serve one of my clients has sent in via tape, and I'm going to compare him to Roger Federer. And that I have to thank Zen Rackets for, for that footage. Check out Zen Rackets. Um, the link is below in the description. It's great pro footage, and it's super helpful for analyses like this. So let's get going. All right, let's take a look at Jay serves here. And what I'm going to do is I'm starting in this position because a lot of times we only ever look at the contact point. And if I were to just see you play without having the benefit of slowing this down, we would probably say like, oh yeah, that's a decent serve. And it is a decent serve. However, I think there's really room for some improvements and some opportunities. So what I don't want to see in this position here is that you're already very rotated open. So if I were to see this from the other side over here, if I were to stand here, I would see your right shoulder and your right hip. And ideally, when you're making contact, you want to be a little bit more side on. So you're already falling out also to the left a little bit. And that is due to some things that we need to change before. Um, in the loading position and actually in the starting position. So whenever we look at the contact point, a lot of times when there are issues at contact point, they actually start with something that is way before that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let your serves run a little slower and then we'll dive into the details. So let's get started off, stop that here. So let's scroll back a little bit. The number one thing that is gonna help is you're not 100% in a continental grip. And there's something happening here that I see quite a lot of times actually. So right here, I already think you're not in your continental grip because I see that the index finger and knuckle, the underside of your index finger and knuckle are actually on this bevel here on the top of the hand. So that's more an Eastern grip, which, you know, a Boris Becker had an Eastern grip. There are some players that, you know, mosey on over to an Eastern grip, but that is the huge exception. So the number one thing is that you really have to come into a continental grip because the wrong grip leads to issues here. And if we slow this down here, do you see how you're actually letting some fingers come off the grip and you're re-gripping even more in an Eastern forehand grip. So that leads you to coming up here, leading with your palm and with the racket face right there. And we call that the waiter's tray because we could put, you know, a glass on that here. So that is a position that we don't want to get into. Not only is it the grip that forces you to get into this position, and then lead up to contact point with your palm already open. It is also the lack of a turn in the loading position. I'll get into that. But again, you see that here that basically you have to fall over to the left to make contact not where you want it to have. So the contact in itself with that grip then is okay, but we could do better. What we don't want is that you have this bend in your spine. Ideally, the body would be a little um, straighter and you still want to have it out here to the side, meaning you're not having that contact point right above your head. You want to have it over to the side. So this angle here is okay. However, again, you would want to have your upper body straight and 
than not already falling out to the left. So let's go back to the loading position and to the starting position because that is where we want to start making those changes because it's almost impossible to make changes actually on the upswing because the swing is so fast and the contact point itself. So number one is the grip. Number two, I would like to see you turn just a little bit more towards the neck post. And that also makes you release the ball not quite as straight on so that your arm would be out here a little bit more pointing to the right net post and that immediately brings your right hip back because that is really where the magic happens when you load properly if you have your right hip down and back it's a lot easier to explode up and out and not fall off to the side because you're basically having to get into that fallout to the left and the waiter's position because you're not getting a turn here and that's a mechanism for your body basically to find that range in another stage. So come around here just a little bit more so that stripe of the pants actually really helps because you also see that there is no hip turn and very le little leg bend. So if there were a little bit more bend down and back, you would then be able to come up and out to the ball and not fall to the side to make room basically to reach the ball. So we're going back to the starting position, left shoulder point a little bit more over to the right net post, tossing arm comes up, it is straight, that's okay. You are releasing the ball right here on top of your head, that's ideal, that's exactly where we want it, only that we would want to have that turn a little bit more. I'm perfectly okay with your racket being here, just keeping on to your continental grip, starting with the continental grip. I do like that your left arm stays up here. I think the position of your toss is okay. You want to have it from about 11.30, if we had a clock, to about 12.30, depending on what kind of, we have a clock here, depending on what kind of serve you're hitting. But with the issue of the grip, you are forced to only hit flat serve. So that is where there is an opportunity with the proper grip. You'll be able a lot more to hit flat serves and slice serves. Um, I'm not necessarily going to get into a kick serve because there are some issues that we need to fix first. So when we're looking at this position, I'm going to put you next to a really good server who also uses a platform. So I want to compare you to Roger Federer because he also uses a platform stance and he has the perfect serve. So there are components that we can look at that are ideal. So just starting here, you see that, that his right leg is way further back. Do you have to have it as far over the right leg behind the left? No, not necessarily. But you do see when he's in his tossing position here that his left shoulder, left hip already are turned way more to the net post. Because this positioning here will then help you to drop into a proper load. So you do see the extremer leg bend. You don't have as much, but you're also not the goat, um, Roger Federer. So I'm okay with less leg bend. You do wanna have a little bit more and, and think more about dropping down and back and then jumping 
rather than just bending your knees because we don't want to overcorrect and then you're bending your knees too much. And of course, I don't know what the um, condition of your knees are. There are, there could be restrictions there. But what we're seeing is that Roger really drops down and back. And in that loading position here, he has hip over hip and shoulder over shoulder. So if I'm looking at your loading position here, you do have your shoulder over shoulder, which is exactly what you want, but there is no hip turn. So now if you look at the distinct difference in how you bring your rackets up, this is what's called the cocking position. And that is really where that waiter position is an effort of your body because you do not have that load before to get into extra range. Now, this is not something that you're doing um, intentionally. That's just something that your body does to get into the ideal position. However, if you do not have the proper preparation in stage two and three in the start and in the loading and the release also, then it's extremely difficult to do that plus you don't have the right grip, but you do see the difference as he's bringing his racket up. He's leading that with the edge. And if we go in here, this is where your racket faces and your palm is leading and he's leading with the knuckles. So part of it again is the grip that needs to be corrected. And then the other part is the preparation in your loading position. And you then see that here, let's say you're about to make contact here. Let's see if I can get Roger into right where he makes contact. You see that shape here of your spine, whereas his is completely straight. So issues with that could be that you're having issues with your lower back, which of course my issue is always that I want to help clients prevent any injury. You are coming inside the court. So that is exactly what we want. So that tells us that your toss is in the proper position in terms of depth in the court. Could you get into the court a little bit more? Yes, but that is not my issue. I want to have you work on your grip first and then really trying to load down and back a little bit.